Hi, I'm Wayne Allen Roof of Personal Liberty, and i got a story for you. It's the longest commentary I've ever given at Personal Liberty, so bear with me, because it's a good one. I'm Obama's college classmate from Columbia University, class of 83, and I've got a hunch on the scandal that ends Obama's hopes for a second term. The scandal that takes down Obama's presidency happened 30 years ago at Columbia University. This is the smoking gun. This also ties into Harry Reid's hunch about Mitt Romney's tax records. You see, Senator Reid opened up Pandora's box. He made it okay for any of us to play a guessing game. If Harry Reid can guess about Romney's taxes without a shred of evidence, then a citizen and taxpayer and former college classmate of Barack Obama, that's me, has the standing to do a little educated guessing of my own. You see, my background is one of a kind. I'm one of the most accurate Las Vegas odds makers and prognosticators ever. Accurate enough that I was awarded my own star in the Las Vegas Walk of Stars one of 60 legends in history of Vegas to be honored with a 180 pound granite star in the sidewalk on Las Vegas Boulevard. Gut instinct is how I've made my living for 29 years since graduating Columbia. My gut is almost always right. I became a self-made millionaire based on my gut instincts. And I smell something rotten in Denmark. Obama has a big skeleton in his closet and it's hidden in his college records at Columbia. But first, let's examine the game being played to distract us from the real scandal. It's a diversion, subterfuge. I call Obama's scheme weapons of mass distraction. Obama and his infamous strategist, David Axelrod, understand how to play dirty political hardball, the best that's ever been played. They learned on the vicious, dirty streets of Chicago where the mob is actually nice compared to the politicians. Team Obama has decided to distract America's voters by condemning and tarring Mitt Romney for not releasing enough years of his tax returns. It's the perfect cover. Obama knows the best defense is a good offense. Just keep attacking Mitt and blaming him for secrecy and evasion while accusing him of having a scandal that doesn't even exist. Then ask your lapdog Senator Harry Reid to chase the Frisbee. The U.S. Senate Majority Leader is now making up stories out of thin air about tax returns he knows absolutely nothing about. It's a cynical, brilliant, and vicious strategy. Make Romney defend so he can't go on offense and attack the real Obama scandal. Classic Axelrod. Obama's won multiple elections in his career, by the way, by slandering his opponents and leaking sealed court documents. Not only do these insinuations and slanders and leaks ruin the credibility and reputation of everyone Obama has ever run against, but they keep his opponents on the defensive and off Obama's trail of sealed documents, and Obama spends millions with armies of lawyers to keep them secret. By attacking Romney's tax records, Obama's team of Chicago hitmen creates a problem that doesn't even exist, and they've even got the cover of the United States Senate Majority Leader in their pocket, leading the charge, assuring the media will cover it. The U.S. Senate Majority Leader joins a scheme to defame a squeaky clean opponent with the record of a choir boy. Romney's the guy every guy wants to marry his daughter. Religious, family man, brilliant, Harvard Law, Harvard Business, never cheated on his wife, donates millions to charity. So you get Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, to make up stories out of thin air to frame an innocent man, and you get the biased liberal media to go along with the execution of an innocent man. But the reason for this baseless attack is the real story. Such brilliant but disgusting, cynical strategy, it could only come from Chicago. The point of this deception and distraction is to make Romney defend so he can't go on the offense to dirty up his perfect record and to give the media something to talk about so they don't investigate the real scandal, Obama's college records at Columbia. But I have the answer for Mitt Romney, a challenge that shuts up Obama forever. It's time to call Obama's bluff, Mitt. Romney should call a press conference and issue a challenge in front of the nation. He should agree to release more of his tax returns only if Obama unseals his college records. What Mitt should say is, what could possibly be so embarrassing, Mr. President, in your college records from 30 years ago <clears throat> that you're afraid to let America's voters even see it? If it's that bad, maybe it's something the voters ought to have a right to see and decide for themselves. And suddenly the tables are turned. Now Obama's on the defensive. My bet is that Obama will never unseal his records. Never. Ever. Because they contain information that would destroy his political career. Once this challenge is made public by Romney, my prediction is you'll never again hear about Mitt's tax returns. End of story, Axelrod Obama, shut up. But why are the college records of a 51-year-old president of the United States so important to keep secret? They're 30 years old, and I think I've uncovered the secret. I know why. 
If anyone should have questions about Obama's record at Columbia, it's me. We both graduated, according to Obama, class of 83 at Columbia. We were both, according to Obama, pre-law and political science majors. And I thought I knew most everyone in my Columbia class, only 700 kids. I certainly thought I knew all of my fellow political science majors, but not Obama, or as he was known back then, Barry Sotero. Can you imagine the President of the United States had a different name 30 years ago? You think you know him? You don't even know his name. But here's where the mystery really deepens. I certainly knew everyone in the political science department, but not Obama. Never met him in my life, never saw him in my life, never even heard of him in my entire four years at Columbia. And none of the classmates that I ever knew at Columbia ever met him, saw him, or heard of him either. But don't take my word for it. The Wall Street Journal reported in 2008 that Fox News randomly called 400 of our Columbia classmates and never found even one who ever admitted to knowing Obama or seeing Obama. Now, all of this mystery could be easily and instantly dismissed if Obama would just release his college transcripts to the media. But even after serving as president for three and a half years, he refuses to unseal his records. Shouldn't the media be as relentless in pursuit of Obama's records as Mitt Romney's records? Shouldn't they be digging for Obama's dirt with the same enthusiasm as Mitt's dirt? Doesn't something smell rotten here? So let's get down and dirty to figure out the scandal. The first question I'd ask you is, if you had great grades, Mr. President, why would you seal your records? So let's assume Obama got lousy grades. Why not release the records? He's president of the free world, for gosh sakes. He's commander in chief of the US military. Who would care about lousy grades from three decades ago, right? So then what's the problem? Doesn't that make the media suspicious? Doesn't it make you suspicious? Something doesn't add up. Secondly, all Obama's old classmates and buddies at Occidental say he was a lousy student there, spending lots of time smoking pot and attending radical meetings. His grades were awful, they say. Again, we can't prove it because Obama's records at Occidental are sealed. So if he had poor grades at Occidental, how did he get admitted to an Ivy League university in the first place? Do you know how hard it is to transfer into a Columbia University? It's almost impossible. And if his grades were lousy at Columbia, how did he ever get into Harvard Law School? So again, his grades must have been really good, right? Straight A's. So then why spend millions to keep them sealed? Third, how did a poor kid pay for all these fancy schools? If he had student loans or scholarships, don't you need good grades to maintain those loans and scholarships? I can only think of one answer that explains all of these mysteries. So here's my gut instinct. I believe Obama got a leg up by being admitted to both Occidental and Columbia as a foreign exchange student. He was raised as a young boy in Indonesia. That's a fact. His mother brought him there. His mother made him an Indonesian citizen. But did his mother ever bother to change him back to a U.S. citizen? I'm betting not. He was abandoned by his mother for all intents and purposes and sent back to live with his grandparents in Hawaii. No one paid any attention to young Obama. So his citizenship was never changed back. No one even thought about it. But suddenly, as he neared college age and started thinking of how to get into college with lousy grades and no money, Obama learned that foreign students have a much easier path being admitted to U.S. universities. And even more amazingly, they get loads of aid and scholarships to attend college for free, something unavailable to U.S. citizens like you and me. It's a completely different path, a path so easy that even a kid with no father, no mother to be found, no money, lousy grades, can get admitted to the best colleges. He was a good talker. He had an exotic background. He's a foreigner. So a plan is hatched. Obama uses his Indonesian passport and citizenship to get into college and suddenly even Ivy League Columbia is a possibility for a foreign student. And it's all paid by the taxpayers. How do you like that? That would explain how a poor kid who rarely attended class and got mediocre grades and with no money was able to get accepted and pay for Occidental and then Columbia and then Harvard Law. The door magically opened for a foreign student because every college needs one or two bright, exotic foreigners to create diversity. Now, the sad reality is there's some U.S. student, a valedictorian of his or her school, who never got to go to Columbia or Harvard Law because Obama fraudulently took their place. That would also explain, by the way, the great mystery of how in the summer of 1981, before his first year at Columbia, Barry Sotero was able to travel to Pakistan when no U.S. citizen was allowed to go there. An American couldn't get in. But no problem if you're an Indonesian citizen using an Indonesian passport. Of course, here's the wrinkle. 
a foreign student isn't qualified to serve as president of the United States. So that secret had to be sealed and covered up for the rest of all time. In 2007, everything happened so fast, no one had time to ask questions. Ask Hillary Clinton about that. She never imagined Obama could beat her, so she never did any serious digging about his past. Next thing you know, Obama beats Hillary, Obama's president, but with a massive secret hanging over his head. That explains why a sitting president of the United States would spend millions of dollars in legal fees to keep his past sealed. If you can unseal Obama's Columbia University records, I believe you'd find the following. Number one, he rarely ever attended class. Number two, his grades were not good. They weren't typical of what you think it takes to get into Harvard Law School. Number three, he attended Columbia as a foreign exchange student. Number four, he never paid for either undergraduate college or Harvard Law School because of foreign aid and scholarships given to a poor kid from a foreign country like Barry Sotero from Indonesia. Lastly, why do his classmates at Columbia not remember Obama? Was he a ghost? Did he never show up in any class? My educated guess is he was too busy smoking pot, attending Marxist meetings, and plotting the destruction of the U.S. economy and the overthrow of capitalism. Don't laugh. It's working. If you think I'm fishing, then prove me wrong. Open up your records, Mr. President. What are you afraid of? If all we'll find is a few C's and D's, then show us the college records. If it's okay for U.S. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to go on a fishing expedition about Romney's taxes, even though he knows absolutely nothing about him, then I think it's fair for me to do the same thing with Obama. But, as Obama's college class of 83 classmate, at least I have standing to make educated guesses. It's time for Mitt Romney to go on the offensive and call Obama's bluff. Oh, and one more thing, Mitt. Tell Harry Reid you'll release all your tax returns when Harry Reid releases all of his because inquiring minds want to know how Harry Reid entered the U.S. Senate with no assets and became one of the wealthiest United States Senators, now worth millions, and living at the Washington, D.C. Ritz-Carlton. I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but we just like to see and prove that he didn't, just as he wants Mitt to prove that he didn't. We want to see those Harry Reid tax returns and figure out that scandal the second biggest scandal, possibly, in all of Washington, D.C., behind only Obama's Columbia scandal. I'm Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. See you next week, same time, same place. God bless America.